Relative Standard Entropy. In this video, we will define relative standard entropy, standard entropy, and then we will rank substances' entropy values by their states, their molecular mass, and their allotropes. You could, of course, always look up the entropy values in a table, but it's worth noting what the relative values are if I weren't to give you those values. Absolute standard entropies tell us the entropy of a mole of a substance under standard state. This is generally at 25 degrees Celsius. We can use these values to calculate the differences in entropy through chemical reactions. Though we can always look these values up, it's important to be able to have a sense for when entropy increases or decreases. So to, we are gonna talk about relative entropies as well, so that you could tell whether a reaction goes up or down in entropy without necessarily having to calculate the value. Let's first talk about the relative entropies of different states. This should feel relatively intuitive. Think about the structure of a solid, a liquid, and a gas. We know that solids are locked into crystal structures, that liquids can move around each other, but are still in contact with other molecules, and that gas molecules can fill the entire volume of their container. Putting this in terms of entropy, if you have a substance, its solid is the most ordered, or the least random. As it melts into a liquid, it becomes less ordered, or more random. So the entropy of a liquid is greater than that of a solid. A gas is even more random and less ordered than a liquid, and so the entropy of a gas is higher than that of a liquid. Here I have the values of water listed so that you can put this in context with some actual numbers. This next concept is very similar to phases, though a little bit different. Let's talk about dissolved solids. If you dissolve a solid, this is generally going to increase your entropy since it distributes the particles throughout the mixture. Here we have an example of this. We have aqueous potassium chlorate having a higher entropy than solid potassium chlorate. This too should feel relatively intuitive that when you dissolve a species in another species, it's going to get more random or less ordered. While we won't go into it much further than this little bit of an introduction, it's worth noting where the degrees of freedom in these solids, liquids, and gas comes from, and that this is factored into the relative entropies. There are three main types of motions that occur within molecules. Translational motion, or moving side to side. Rotational motion, spinning. Or vibrational motion, along a bond vibrating in different modes. In all three cases, liquids have more than solids, and gases have more than liquids. And so gases have the largest entropy, then liquids, and last of all, solids. The next comparisons aren't quite as intuitive as the phases but they aren't too complicated, so you'll be all right. The larger the molar mass of a species, the higher its entropy. That's pretty easy to remember. The formal explanation for this is that the available energy states are more closely spaced. Therefore, you can get more randomness throughout the possible states. For this one, it's really just most important that you be able to rank them in terms of their molecular masses I won't actually ask you about the why for this one, just because it moves into the concepts of stat mech that I, we aren't gonna cover in this class. Um, so don't focus on the particular whys unless you're interested, and then you can come in and talk to me in person and we'll go through it in a bit more detail. Um, just make sure that you could rank these and say that in general, the higher the molecular mass, the more entropy. Now let's compare some molecules. Generally, the larger and more complex a molecule is, the higher its entropy. Here we have four different molecules and atoms with their molecular masses listed. Take a moment and look at this. You can see that with increasing molar mass and increasing complexity, you also get increasing entropy. We also need to consider allotropes. As an example of a common allotrope that we've used in previous examples in this class, we have graphite and we have diamond. Both are forms of solid carbon. Based on the idea of entropy being more random, which do you think will have the most entropy? Take a moment looking at the structures and see if you can think about this, which one is more random? If you compare the graphite and the carbon, the graphite layers are not bonded together. 
They're held together only by intermolecular forces. Meanwhile, the diamond is very tightly ordered into this three-dimensional structure, bonded in this tetrahedral manner. This makes graphite less constrained than diamond. Diamond is much more constrained. Therefore, if we look at the entropy values, diamond is going to have a much lower entropy value because it is much less random, or it is much more constrained. Whereas graphite has the much higher entropy value because it is more random or less constrained. So in review, we have standard entropy values, and we can look those up on tables, but we also want to make sure that we can rank these in order of phases, including aqueous or other dissolved phases, in terms of molecule size, and in terms of how constrained their structures are. So solids have the lowest entropy, gases have the highest. Solids that are not dissolved have a lower entropy value than solids that are dissolved. Smaller molecules have less entropy than larger molecules. And if you have very constrained three-dimensional structures, those will be more ordered or less random and have a lower entropy value than the non-constrained structures.